Hi, welcome to another video. So this is a mock-up of uh, a side-by-side -side fridge freezer. Typically Whirlpool, Smeg, Admiral, Maytag, that sort of stuff. Similar to the uh, American KitchenAid. But you'll see here I've got infrared receiver tied to the right hand cardboard box. I've got um, a Maytag ice maker and I'll show you how to save some money on the Whirlpool ice makers if you need to repair them. Buy a Maytag one. Buy a Maytag one, £70. Pound. Swap over a piece of plastic, then you've got a £150 pound ice maker. Uh, anyway, so that's the ice maker in front of you. And on the left hand wall, I'm simulating this is the infrared transmitter. So it's an LED at 500 milliwatt. Hopefully, you can see it's a bit dark, but you can see I've got it taped shut. So that's the infrared ice control. That's actually the, as I say, the LED transmitter. Uh, it's infrared so you can't see it and that's just it one resistor one LED in the infrared scale so that's the transmitter and that's the receiver so now with the ice maker turned on on the front panel you open the freezer door so I'll just untie this transmitter flap so let me simulate the door being opened so you open the freezer door and you see that flashes twice. So that indicates the primary functions are actually working. You should get two flashes, maybe one then two, but you should get two repeated flashes over and over again when the doors open. For those of you with whirlpools, smegs, hot points, uh, admirals, the power for this infrared receiver is supplied from the back board. So if you haven't got a red light flashing, Chances are the relay or something on the back board's failed, so change the rear board. Which is quite expensive just to get an ice maker going, but there you go. So that's the receiver flashing away. Right, if I come over to this infrared transmitter, you see with the door open, the flap opens, and with the door closed, it puts the ice bucket, presses that closed. So press this flap, and then look again at the infrared receiver and you see the LED stays on so that indicates the transmitter is transmitting and the receiver which is inside here infrared receiver that is picking up the infrared light and the light staying on so that's the basic functions indicating the infrared transmitter and receiver is working but even though we have this function and that's staying on it doesn't eliminate this from a possible fault with your ice maker. Now it's, it's saying the door has been left open more than two minutes. So, so that's holding the flap closed. Now if we let go, you see it goes back to flashing again. Right, so that's the basics. So if the infrared receiver looks like it's working properly and you press the flap on the left hand wall and the red light stays on, that's the basics are okay. So then you need to look at the ice maker itself. So with these Maytag, Smeg, Hotpoint, Admiral and Whirlpool ice makers, the parked position for these fingers is, as you can see here, about 10 o'clock or two o'clock, depending on which way you look at it. But this is the park position, so you want to in, look at these fingers and are they parked or are they buried down inside the ice somewhere. So if they're parked, then that's it, maybe your ice maker's okay. And a common, common problem is the water feed, little rubber tube sits in this corner. I hope you can see it there. Pull this rubber tube out. This is just a mock-up, but inspect the end of this rubber tube and make sure it's not blocked with ice. That can get blocked with ice and stop the water coming in. Especially if the water solenoids, sort of leaking water, starts causing drips and then the drips, drips of water just get frozen. Stops it filling back up the water. So check this rubber pipe is clear. If it is, then move on to the next step. So the infrared looks like it's working. The fingers are parked. The water pipe isn't blocked. 
uh, and obviously it's plumbed in, you can check your water supply, make sure that you're getting a supply of water. So if that's all set up and working as it should be, you should have ice. So the next thing to check if you haven't got ice, is there actually ice sitting inside this ice maker? It should be half full of water, that should have frozen, assuming your freezer is working properly. Yeah, so if there's ice in there and the fingers haven't rotated to spit the ice out or to harvest the ice as well, we'll say, uh, you're possibly looking at a suspect receiver. Because, um, as I say, although the light can stay on, it doesn't eliminate that from a possible cause. So if the infrared looks like it's behaving, the fingers are parked, this isn't blocked, you need to start checking the thermostat on this ice maker. Now this is a mock-up, so I've got a base already here. So this is, as I say, a Maytag ice maker. There's a, a sort of two kilowatt heater there, motors under here. This screws to there. But to take the ice maker out, one screw underneath somewhere, I forget, uh, and two clips. Release these two small plastic clips, push them up, and slide the ice maker out. I believe there's a plastic cowling covering the wiring and that just clips off. So take the ice maker out, take the plastic cover off, it's best to do it with the mains off. And to eliminate either the ice maker or the uh, infrared electronics, we bridge out the thermostat. So I'm doing this with the power off. So a piece of wire you see how long that is. Put it into here, T and H, which is the internal thermostat of the ice maker. So I poke that in there. I'll show you inside here later. So I've bridged the thermostat so that mimics the ice maker being nice and cold. I'll tape this shut and turn the power on. Obviously I have to tape it shut because I haven't got a door and if I had a door you then wouldn't be able to see the ice maker. Right, so I'll turn the power back on. Let's see what this is doing. So you can see I, I must have the door open because that light's staying on telling me it's seeing the transmitter as so I shut the door. Now, what you could do is tape up the light switch so you can see what's going on. Tape up the light switch on the top of the ceiling that knocks the interior freezer light off. So if I just open the door, close it, that's definitely working. So what you can do, get the receiver generally wants to see the door open and closed, make sure everything's working. So if I undo this flap on the left, open the freezer door, it's flashing. Now close the door. I'll take my transmitter back up. Right, nothing's happening at the moment, but what you can do to prime the whole system is put the unit on standby. Don't turn it off at the wall, just put the unit on standby for 30 seconds. Well, I'll take this back off standby. Well, I just heard a click from this infrared receiver. Well, you see there, the light has started a blink, so that tells me it's harvesting ice. Well, that's the signal to indicate it's harvesting ice. And you can see the fingers have dropped down because I've bridged out the thermostat. But what's important, this thermostat bridged out brings in a two kilowatt heater. 
and the fingers come down, stall against the ice until the heater heats up the whole thing to release the ice. So you have to pull this out, otherwise you will blow up that heater and probably trip the house, trip the electrics. So I pulled out that link, and that's just going to finish harvesting the ice. So that's still flashing. Obviously if this is on your fridge freezer, you'd have to, as I say, tape the light switch closed. So it thinks the door is closed. And just to reiterate, I've got this side taped up. So I left that wire link in for what was it 20 seconds something like that and this base is quite hot if you leave it in if you leave that wire link in it is going to kill that heater the heater will then go short circuit ground and it will trip your electrics so hopefully you can see that light flashing there lights off. And you can see the fingers are coming up and round. Now so if the fingers go down into the ice and stop and your fridge freezer is sort of over five six years old it's very likely that the motor inside the ice maker is shot. They've got nylon gears and the the gears wear out but obviously if they come round to this position this is somewhere here is the position where it will then take in water uh, this turns the keep in shot the switches in here turn the water on to fill it back up with water via this spout so as I say that's the infrared transmitter it sits on the left end wall and that flap covers up this hole so the receiver can't see it and the electronics for the infrared receiver look like that this is the red flashing LED that you see and the infrared receiver is there uh, got a capacitor relay these capacitors do sometimes fail on early models but believe me that's not the only fault you get on these boards uh, you've got a microcontroller there so once it's dispensed ice this won't let it dispense ice for a further 40 minutes at least 40 minutes on this type of model and various surface mount resistors, transistors, that sort of stuff well I've just heard another click so that I forgot to show you this uh, light continues to flash uh, after the ice maker's parked but you can see it's all now finished if I open the door again that light stays on that's because this is tied shut. So I let that go. You can see it's back to flashing. Right, I've got one of these later. Uh, six cents whirlpool side by side fish freezers. This is the one with uh, Flextronics uh, electronics. Not fantastic, and I can't show you the infrared because my ice maker is in the rear of the fridge freezer, as you can see there. Let me just slide this out, and you see up there that's a 12 volt ice maker. So the light switch I was talking about is this one here, taping that shut so you can see the electronics, see the uh, infrared panels working, that obviously simulates the door being closed. Right so this is the ice maker, this is a Maytag one and if you buy a Maytag one it comes like this except without the loom. So if you've got a Whirlpool one unscrew the base, put that to one side. So what I've done, don't be afraid of taking them apart, there aren't hundreds of springs that are going to pop everywhere, 
take the white cover off, take these screws out. What I'm going to sh show you is bridging out this thermostat to simulate frozen water being in the ice maker. You need to eliminate either your ice maker or the infrared receiver. Obviously if the fingers aren't tight like this, if they spin round freely, then probably the motor is shot. So take these three screws out, pull that out of there, and if I just show you the fingers now spin freely, and you can't misalign it, there's a little flat on one side. So, so this is the thermostat we're bridging out. That's the shaft that rotates. These two pins here are the heater and that plug there is obviously the wiring loom but you don't get the wiring loom on the make tag unit. If So the infrared receiver powers this motor up, the fingers start rotating and inside here one of the switches closes. That brings on this 2 kilowatt heater, it's at least 2 kilowatts. That brings on the heater uh, and then the fingers come down and start pushing the eyes out once it's been released from here with the heat. But when this thermostat warms up that then turns the heater off. So if you don't pull a little wire link out, if you've bridged it, if you don't pull a link out, the heat is going to stay on and it will cook this element and you'd have to throw the whole lot away. These elements aren't available separately. So this motor assembly, you can see the gear here that drives the fingers. Here's another arm here. So there's a flat on one side. And I can't physically turn that because all the nylon gears in here, this is actually a new motor, all the gears are intact, stopping this from turning, but if yours spins, the motor is shot. So if you're bridging the thermostat, to i.e. to eliminate this thermostat being faulty, these do go wrong, I think they're available separately, sort of 15, 20 pound, but for the price of it, buy a whole new ice make, I reckon. So this is my piece of wire. There is mains all over the fridge freezer. These are mains. Uh, mains on the transmitter, mains here, so don't touch anything with it with it turned on. Don't do anything with the power turned on. So this is the link you saw earlier. Put it in T and H. Push that down. And hopefully I can get you in close enough so you can see what's happening. If I get my pointer, there's two tiny holes here. And hopefully you can see Change, change your video to HD if you're not in HD. You can see the copper wire is bridging this contact and this contact here. Hopefully you can see the copper wire just there. So if I pull that back out. Hopefully, hopefully you can see that. So that's the link I made up. You can obviously make it longer but the bare wire only needs to be that long. Poking into T and H, that bridges the thermostat, so you can then eliminate the thermostat. As I say, you might have to turn the fridge freezer on and off uh, at the mains. If you're turning it off, leave it off for one minute before turning it back on, because this microcontroller, as I said, will stop it harvesting ice uh, within 40 minutes of the previous harvest. So if you've got one of the Whirlpool ice makers, or SMEG, uh, I think Admiral possibly, one of those Admiral, Maytag, Armana, and you want to save yourself a bomb if your motor assembly is shot, you can actually get this assembly from Whirlpool for £48, £50, but then you might have a faulty thermostat, there may be corrosion down here, or something else, so I would just recommend you buy from eBay. £69 I believe they are, maybe a bit of shipping. Buy a Maytag ice maker, doesn't come with a loom. So take the motor assembly off, two screws in here, which I'll undo now. Right, so take these two screws out of there, one and two. 
As I say, don't be afraid of misalignment, you can't get it wrong. Pull this assembly off. This lean you have to take off your existing ice maker. Just release the clip in there. Incidentally, this one's repaired. If your thermostat, which has just come away with this, this thermostat is normally stuck to here. Let me take it out for you. This is the thermostat we're bridging. And it closes, I don't know, something like minus 12, minus 15 degrees. That tells the infrared receiver this is nice and cold. So that says there, and we just bridge this out to simulate this being cold. That's the thermostat. That's the heater assembly. So this is a Maytag. So you take this piece of plastic off. Get your whirlpool one, strip it down, and simply see two lugs there, one here. Sit that into there while locating that top corner in there. Put this housing with the thermostat back on. Shouldn't have taken it out. Thermostat. Put that back onto there. Put the two screws back in there. Right, the screws are back in there. Get the motor assembly. Get the correct orientation, so TH down the bottom. This is if. Locate that in there while keeping these fingers roughly at 10 o'clock to line up that flat. Push that back on. Three screws. One, two, three. Do those back up. Put your whirlpool wiring loom back in. Whirlpool smeg, whatever. That clips under there. So I think I forgot to say, yeah, if that thermostat sticks, there's a thermal fuse in this wiring and it will blow. That stops the whole thing burning, burning, catching fire. So then screw that back onto the base. That obviously releases the wiring loom slots into this slot. Screw that back onto there. Pop it back into the fridge freezer and you've then saved yourself over £100. As I say, the Maytag one's about £70. The Whirlpool one's about a good £158, £160, depending where you buy it. Some are over £300. Incidentally, there's a Smeg model, one of the fancy models, with a white cover, it covers a load of electronics. And you might, there's a green LED here. If you've got one of those, bad luck. It's got loads of electronics and some of the components inside do fail. If you've got one of those, give us a shout and I'll give you some tips. Well, I noticed that other view of this link was sort of out of focus. So what I've done, put the macro lens on and hopefully you can see me putting this wire in and out. That's that link. So that's one contact just inside there. And the other contact just inside there. Hopefully you can see that. You can obviously make the link longer, but you don't want to obviously have it protruding too much into the ice maker and I don't know, shorting out these contacts from the spring or something. So. That's a close-up view of this link. And that's obviously the link removed. So by now, bring it back out. Hopefully you can see the two holes. If I just turn it upside down, 
and you see the TNH for thermostat. So, in summary, if the fingers on your ice maker are pointing at 10 o'clock and they're parked and they're just not moving, it could possibly be the thermostat. So you eliminate the thermostat by bridging it out with that wire link. If you bridged it out and it's still not moving, then that suggests the infrared receiver and the ele associated electronics are faulty. As I say, you can have the red light flashing, the correct sequence and everything, and it can still be faulty. So that's what makes testing these difficult. So bridge out the thermostat. If the fingers still don't move, you're looking at one of these, assuming the red light did flash on. If it's totally dead, no, no flashing light, certainly on the European models, that points to the rear board not supplying this with power. Obviously make sure your ice maker is turned on. If the red light doesn't stay on when you shut this flap, then your infrared transmitter LED is faulty. So that's the transmitter, that's the receiver. If you bridged out the thermostat and the fingers do rotate, then that means the thermostat in here is faulty, so you can either buy yourself a new thermostat fitted, or you can get yourself a Maytag ice maker and just be done with it, change a whole lot, gives you a new motor, new nylon gears, all that sort of stuff, and obviously a nice clean base, not corroded with water, that sort of stuff. If the fingers aren't parked and they're sitting down here and you can hear a humming from the motor, or these are sort of more loose than this one, then that suggests the motor inside the ice maker is worn. Uh, so in which case you change the ice maker. So I know it's a, a little tricky, you, know, you don't know if it's the infrared or the ice maker, but what I've shown you today, hopefully you can eliminate one or the other. Thank you very much.